Greetings, I'm DK Rosner. Welcome back to the TTT News. One of the beautiful things about Trinidad and Tobago to me is the way that observances of different faiths can traverse similar paths and timings. We are going in-depth on Ramadan and Eid reflections with Imam Ibrahim Drayton Loney. Assalamu alaikum, Imam. How are you doing? Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Good, alhamdulillah. Very glad to hear. But even before we start to traverse the journey of Ramadan, I want to get a little more into your information. Thank you. It seems as though you spent your teenage years in South Africa. How did that come about? Well, 2011, I would say, I became a Muslim. Right, I also converted to the faith. And like six months after that, I went on a study to become an Islamic scholar. So my first Ramadan was not in Trinidad. I was like 13, 14, then I returned age 19, going to 20. And yes, that was the year, 2018. I had my first Ramadan in Trinidad. Few months after, I could say like six months after, I became the Imam of Diamond Village Masjid, which I am currently. No, I hear the, I hear, I can hear the Azan from where I live, but that has never kind of inspired me to say, okay, well, I want to be the Imam. What, what was the inspiration for saying, okay, well, I want to take this course of study, I want to take on this responsibility to this level? What was that for you? Well, for me, I'm a type of person. When I'm doing something, I want to go all the way. So when I embrace Islam, soon after I wanted to know it to the best of my ability, know the most I could know. So I went and actually the course is not a course to be an Imam, it's a course to be an Islamic scholar, which is an Alim or a Maulana as they know it in Trinidad. Some refer to it as a Sheikh. And when I came back, I used to go different masjids to give lectures on Fridays. And this masjid, along with few masjids, wanted me to be the imam. I never thought of being the imam when I came back. I just wanted to know more of the religion. But I think the way they heard me speaking and what they learned, I guess, is the reason that they approached me to be the imam. And I think it was a good thing to do, so I just went full again. As I am a full person, I go, if I like something, I do it on Jalan. I became the Imam. Now it's over four years I'm the Imam there. And in terms of going, f and going, to, so full, going full hundred, take us through the five pillars of Islam, thank you. Right, as the messenger of Islam, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Bunyal Islamu ala khamsin. Islam is established upon five pillars. Shahadatu Allah ilaha illallah, to bear witness that there is no one worthy of worship but Allah. Yani there is one God and Muhammad is his final prophet and messenger. After that, iqami salah to establish salah, that is the five prayer. So the reason you were saying the Athan you would say is because they will actually gather in to pray their daily prayers, right? They establish the prayer, ita is zakat, pay zakat, which is the compulsory charity that the Muslims who are more rich or well off are entitled to give those who are less fortunate and are Muslims as well. So me Ramadan, fast in the month of Ramadan, which of course we would go into more as we proceed, Wahaj al Bayt Manistatu alayhi sabil, and to also go to pilgrimage for that person who is able to do so. And looking at the, that journey during Ramadan, what are some of those, um, the importance of journeying, of, of, that, of, that, of that procedure, of taking those steps through the month of Ramadan? What was what, the significance of that? Well, the journey that we take in Ramadan, firstly, we need to understand is a spiritual journey. It's not a physical journey. 
And for that is the saying of the Prophet Sallallahu whereby he makes mention, Kulu Amal ibn Adam, all the actions for the sons of Adam is for him. Meaning, if a person, he gives charity, there's a reward that is specified for him. If a person performs salah, he prays, there's a reward that is specified for him. All the different actions. This is what the Prophet is saying. But concerning soyam, fasting, Allah mentions in Hadith Qudsi, through the blessed lips of Prophet Muhammad, this is the only action that the person does that is for Allah. Right? Meaning, it is more internal. It is something spiritual. Nobody else knows your fasting but Allah. He knows the reality. And this journey uplifts the person in herself. It uplifts the person's spirit, strengthens it, grows it in different ways, helps it to develop new qualities by what we call tarbiya and a discipline. So this is the point of this spiritual journey, to uplift our spirit, to strengthen our spirit, and to give us more spiritual abilities and qualities or good habits. And in terms of that upliftment, you're saying that, and I'm thinking of two basketballers. This is in the National Basketball Association. One, my favorite basketballer ever, uh, Hakeem, the dream Elijah one, who would have played a lot of playoff games during the month of Ramadan, where he didn't even consume water until it was time to break the fast. Yes. And that conversation is now swirling around Kyrie Irving, another monumental player. And there, there have been conversations in terms of the amount of focus that you are allowed because you have kind of taken this decision to shun uh, food during this point of time. So it allows for a greater amount of focus. Is that something that you find from uh, persons in, in, in other walks of life as well? Well, fasting, people see it as something, okay, we refrain from food for a certain time and thinking about it, it may weaken you. But as I mentioned, it's something spiritual. And the core of the person, even the physical self, is spiritual. So when you strengthen the spiritual self, you find that even the physical self would adapt better than usual. So you give an example of a basketballer, there's also examples of footballers like Benzema. You know, he, he scored a hat-trick whilst he was fasting. There was another footballer and different sports, not only sports, but even sometimes actions that you may do on a daily basis. You find when you're fasting, you have more focus on it. It's more clear. Why? Because that spiritual self that you have is actually being developed, getting more strong. So you're able to do the things that you do normally even better than normal. And with that, we take a short break. We're actually going to come back to this conversation. I, I want to start just after the break in terms of alternatives for people who are, or persons who are not able to do the fast for one reason or the other. But we continue our conversation with Imam Drayton Loney. Stay with us. We'll return with more. Welcome back. We are going in-depth on the journey of Ramadan. We're doing so with Imam Maulana Ibrahim Drayton Loni. And we would have, you would have spoken about the Azan being the call to pray. Take us through what we just saw on the screen, please, Imam. Right. So you just witnessed what we do on a normal basis before we break our fast. And it's something we actually excited or delighted to do because Whilst we was in the state of the pandemic, we were unable to gather like this. We were unable to congregate. And we in a more in a more fresh and happy state than even before. Right? And you actually witnessed the Hafiz in our masjid, Hafiz Maqsud, reciting the Quran. He's reciting the Quran the time just before we break the fast. 
Why? Because, you know, the Prophet first, he says, for the person who's fasting, they saw him farhatan, there would be two happy times. Farhatun in the futur. When he's breaking his fast, is a happy time, is a delighted time. And then the second happy time is when he's meeting his Lord. So he's reciting the words of Allah, he's reciting the Quran. And if we fast in for Allah, and this is a spiritual thing, the best thing to do whilst you are fasting is to listen to what Allah has to say. Yani, the vast majority of us in Trinidad do not understand the language for now. But when you understand it, when you get to realize and understand what Allah is saying, it actually gives you more focus. That, like what that fast gives you, it gives you more focus and uplifts the inner self more, which will help us to focus and act better, even physically. And I like the fact that you talk about well, possibly not able to understand the language for now. And that makes me want to ask the significance of a schooling system that helps take you from the cradle to say, OK, well, there's, a, there's this entire community that one, not just deals with the language, but also the, the practice as opposed to saying, OK, well, you can't do that now because this is a different system you're not allowed to. So what is the importance of saying having that academic system, that schooling system that allows for this kind of Islamic expression during and marrying it with academic life? Well, to put it together with the academic life, we would actually need more years with it to actually make it a subject or make the schools realize the importance of teaching RK as a subject, religious knowledge, teaching Islam in the schools. Why? Because we realize over the years, the population of Muslims in Trinidad are increasing. So we need to actually give something to them when, we go to, when they go to school. We need to give something to them so that they can actually develop more as the type of individuals they are. And I think it's also important that we understand each other so that uh, there is less fear, because sometimes there can be fear of what is not known, or fear of the unknown, mm -hmm. and that leads to some very scary uh, repercussions sometimes. But we were speaking about the importance of the fast during Ramadan, and what are some of those alternatives, or are there alternatives to, to fasting if the person is not able to fast for one reason or the other? Right. So there will be two alternatives, I would say, firstly, because in Islam, when we go to the Islamic law, it's always judged on the situation. So generally talking, it can be into two. Firstly, the person who has a temporary reason not to fast. For example, a woman who is pregnant, she has a temporary reason, meaning when she gives birth and she's in a healthy state, she will be able to fast again. So for this person, they will just take care of their body, make sure they are okay, and when they are in a better state, they fast. So this is a temporary state. And then on a long term, where the person is unable to fast on the whole, permanently, he can't fast. For this person, the Islamic law came up with what we call fidya, is to repay. Repaying for the fact that when we fast in, we start feeling how others feel. That we don't feel normally. Some of us never, we're never hungry in a day in our life. But when we fast in, we feel that hunger and then we start realizing, you know, this is how people feel. This is people feel in this way. You, then you, you feel for others, you become aware of others. So because you can't fast, there's another way to do such, which is giving somebody a meal or giving them the amount of money that they can buy a meal. So that is actually the replacement for the person who cannot fast to feed somebody. And in terms of those alternatives and building empathy so you feel what that person feels, I think sometimes people think that Islam, there is a, a monolith. So is, is, it, is it true that every person, every follower of the way is the same in terms of the, the teachings that they follow? And what of that, the unity across, if there are any differences? Well, firstly, when a person becomes a Muslim, be the person converting to Islam or be the person 
born into the faith, we understand that Allah says in the Quran, Udkhulu fi salmi kafa, enter into the fold of Islam completely. Right? So, enter into the fold, we are equal in the fact that, or in the sense that we enter completely. But after entering into the fold of Islam, we learn, we see that firstly, the Quran is same. Right? For the vast majority of Muslims, we read the same Quran. There are a few, we would say, deviant sects that actually add to the Quran, and this is not what the bulk of the Islamic doctrine or the Islamic scholars accept. And in the majority of Muslims, there are differences. And I would say there are differences that are not taking them out of the fold of Islam. And as Muslims, we are in a position now, in this year, this time that we live, that for every different group of Muslims, there, there is a proper leader or a scholar that can actually voice or express the stance that they took. So what we need to do as Muslim leaders, Muslim scholars, is find a way to come together, sit, let the general Muslim population listen to the differences and let them see actually which one is the right way to take so that we can actually be more united because Allah commands us with unity in the Quran. He says, وَعْتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ Hold on firm to the rope of Allah and do not separate. The Prophet also tells us separation is from the devil. Separation is not something good. So we are united when it comes to the fundamental belief, which is La ilaha illallah, there is no God but Allah, and Muhammad is the final messenger. We are united there, but there are some minor differences that we still need to put aside and find the bigger picture or the straight and narrow and stay together. So we still have some improvement as a community, as a group of people in Trinidad and Tobago, I would say. And we want to thank you so much for these messages, but I want, we, in the final minute that we have, is there a message that you'd have for members of the faith or the wider community during the month of Ramadan? Well, I can say this is not our first Ramadan for majority. It, it is for a lot of people and it would be the last for others because of reasons, because of death as the reality. And it will not be the last for many of us. And my advice for this Ramadan is that learn something new for this Ramadan. Adopt a good habit, leave a bad habit. So when next Ramadan comes, you have a good habit that was from the previous Ramadan. Don't leave it after Ramadan. Keep it so that when the, new, the next Ramadan comes, you will adopt another good habit and which will actually develop us as a community and as a group of people. Building incrementally on our way to the, the one true God. Thank you so much, Imam Imam Maulana Ibrahim Drayton Loney, speaking about the month of Ramadan and things that we should be speak or focusing on. And on behalf of the entire TTT news team, we want to thank you for tuning in. This has been In Depth with me, DK Rasta. Thank you for joining us. <laughs>